software. Does that kind of answer your question? Yeah, it does. I mean, I mean, just a quick follow-up comment, I guess. Which is, yeah, I mean, when you're when you're talking about um, encoding these things in software, well, software is it's a formal language. It's well defined. It's easy to draw a bright line between what the software understands and what it doesn't. Right, so here the software understands the if-else procedure, mm -hmm. and it doesn't understand any of the content that you are then prompted to say right. on the phone bank or whatever. Yes, else. definitely. Or, different or, or yeah. your example with the story yeah. too. Um, and so I guess, um, I mean, so, so the, the thing I'm curious about just is, is then um, outside of the, the kind of software model where the answer is kind of provided for you between, I mean, or the, the line between the procedure and content is there in advance. Um, how? Do, you know, um, how do you kind of demonstrate in a principled way the mapping between the software model and just, just the way people think and Yeah, I guess for me, I, I want to provisionally draw a line on something like the phone binding script between the rules and the content. And, no, and just point, to people, point this out to people to say that what's happening here is an authoring of procedures and not an authoring of content. That in, in this particular moment, the line between the two is blurry. But we, do, we talk about the authoring of content all the time in, in, in rhetoric, mm -hmm. people who study rhetoric, but we don't really talk about as much, I won't say we don't at all, we don't talk as much about how procedures make arguments along with the content. So I agree that it's a blurry line. I feel like in, this, in the sense of the phone script, I'd like to at least provisionally, in that sort of moment of, of reading it, draw the line to make that point. Um, another example that came to mind, I think it's related to the, the uh, phone bank is when you call your real bank and you get a computer that says if you'd like your uh, savings balance, press zero, you know, if you'd like. Or now so say zero. Right. Say exactly. balance, yeah. So, you know, there are machines which are taking over these uh, human interactions. But it sounds to me that you are also thinking about other um, less apparent places in culture where this kind of mapping to use. Mm -hmm. The metaphor here is going on. So, can you talk more about you know these other places? So, outside a campaign, outside a formal sales pitch, outside calling a um, your a company and getting a you know a menu, a phone tree, press zero, blah blah blah. Where where else is this happening, and and how is it working? Well, that's not something I'm actually. I mean, that's a great question. It's not actually something I'm currently pursuing. It is something that that Bogos does in, the, in persuasive games in the book. He kind of, but they all seem to come back to conversation trees, right? That, that his procedures end up being about human interaction that is dictated, that the interaction is dictated by a set of rules. My bigger interest is actually going to track these procedures through through the actual software that we interact with on a daily basis. You mean places like Facebook, or uh, Google, Facebook, or? Twitter, okay. uh, Google. But the reason I sort of go in the direction, of, uh, the folks in the seminar that I worked with, we wrote, were working on an article about Google Wave, which has recently been nixed by Google, but is still out there and exists. And our attempt, what, what we're trying to do is read Google as an art, Google Wave as an artifact, right? That the, the software is the artifact, not the text generated by it. Mm -hmm. So that's really my sort of, what I'm more interested in. And the reason we went to something like Wave, and the reason I would say things like, you know, Facebook or Twitter, is that, this conversation that's happening in software studies is almost exclusively about video games, <coughs> story generation, sort of fiction, narrative, and artistic kinds of pieces of software. Bogus argues that that, and the reason he focuses on video games is twofold. One, he really likes video games, and he designs them and plays them. And two, they express things in a way that other kinds of software can't. And my counter-argument to that is, I think by drawing that distinction, we limit what we can and sh or should study. Um, and this is, I, and I could track this back to a debate we, we were having just a few seconds, yeah. or a few minutes ago in our meeting before this, yeah. the rhetoric literature split, mm -hmm. right? That in English departments this has played out for many years that uh, the literary object can express things that the sort of more sort of instrumental art object cannot. And what I am hoping to be able to do with this kind of project is show that we, we harm our, ourselves and our ability to analyze things when we separate, when we keep those two things separate. Well, I guess, you know, another way to, to ask my question, and maybe you've answered it already, is to what extent is procedurality um, something, um, you know, a, a set of rules that you can 
you point to, or is it a metaphor? Because at some point it sounds to me as if it's actually a, a logic, as a kind of program. It's something material. And at other points it sounds to me as if you're gesturing towards it, or, or the authorities you're using are gesturing towards it as a broader uh, conceptual thing, which is not necessarily limited right. to Soft. a set of rules or software or machine, but actually is a, a metaphorics mm -hmm. that has implications beyond machine interactions or these highly scripted human interactions, which seems to me very much like calling the bank, mm -hmm. finding out what your balance is. Yes. I would say, yes, both of those things are happening. I would say my focus as I go forward in this project is on how how we interact with ubiquitous and invisible software in ways that are invisible. Like we don't, we're not taught unless we program, unless we write software, we're not taught how to understand some of the inner workings, right? And what I what I'm hoping to find is a way to talk about software and it's the arguments it makes and how it expresses things in a way that is accessible to someone who doesn't program. That's what I'm really after because I think you're getting it. Okay, good. Uh, because I, you know, I, I feel like it's a, it's completely necessary given how many. Think, stop and make a list of the number of soft pieces of software you've used today. Um, wait, I hand the back. Yeah, I was just thinking. I was stepping a bit out of politics, but I was thinking about uh, a few weeks ago. I looked at a pair of shoes on Zappos, and then ten minutes later, the sh pictures of the shoes started appearing on every single website I was looking at. So I was thinking about the way that those client tracking software starts to make internal arguments. So for instance, if I look at a pair of shoes to give to my mother on her birthday, the internal argument of the tracking assumes that customer X likes women's shoes. Well, I wasn't. I was just looking at women's shoes as, as a gift. But now I'm in this sort of uh, argumentative stream where every website I now, I'm now seeing pictures of women's shoes marketed to me. So the software, now the software is just making this probability that a person who buys something once now has a greater likelihood of buying it again, but the software is built on this internal argument that person X is a fan of Y, which may or may not be the case. And the trick there, and then I want to get to Scott, is that there are, that that is, you cannot get to the code because it's proprietary, right? So you can't get to that algorithm because Who's going to give you that? That's proprietary code. What you can do is do exactly what you just did. Right. Sort of critique or think about or engage with the algorithm and understand how it works. I mean, that might be a very simple example, but we've all experienced it. Or I have to go to Zappos and buy lots of men's shoes. So that's <laughs> <laughs> the algorithm. That's sort of to that. Exactly. But the key here is, you know, we, the key is that sometimes we have access to the software and the code and the and the, and, uh, and can get in there and pick apart how it works. Most times we don't. So even beyond giving the sort of layman a, a chance to understand how software works, this is a, an approach that we need because we interact with proprietary software and we can't get inside the black box. So the only thing we have is the procedures and trying to understand how they work. So that's even a, a better reason why we kind of need this approach. Scott. Um, I, okay, so that's actually really, I was thinking of the scene of the inappropriate algorithm or something like that. There's a moment when it seems to me that a procedural, or a, when, when a procedure goes awry and its content, or its form ceases to be appropriate to its content, or rather, it seems to be making assumptions about content. And I want to press harder on the form content distinction mm -hmm. we were talking about, in part because the procedure, your example here with PHP, has typed variables. Mm -hmm. So already you can't write a procedure without making assumptions about the space that this procedure is going to work on. That is to say, that procedures work on things, yes. and therefore there is some form, you, you formalize the content in some way, and so I'm wondering um, what, how you address that, like what, what, where, where the rubber meets the road, what we're seeing in the, in the Facebook wants you to like something totally inappropriate, um, is a moment when what you're seeing is there's a mismatch between the formalized content space of a procedure and the actual content of the messy real world. And so I'm wondering... So you're asking what happens, or... or well, it, we're going back to the can we really separate form yeah. content so much, and one of the things that I think you could make an argument for is that we need to read formally in order to be able to understand the content of these 